All right, so picking up after a longer interruption, um, if you have this information about the unit circle and you know what the X and Y values would be for um, these angles for a unit hypotenuse, meaning a length of one, then that also means that you can take a look at your trigonometric identities here. You can actually work backwards using these to find the angles. In particular here, the tangent is going to be the most useful for us because if we have these two components already of a resultant vector, notice that if this is the angle that we are looking for, then we have the opposite and the adjacent sides. We know what those are. And that ratio between them, it doesn't matter what those actual values are, it's the ratio between them that is related to the tangent of the angle. And so the way you would do this in math class is you would take the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent, and that would give you the angle. You might also see people refer to this or I might refer to it occasionally as arctan. That's just the inverse tangent. In this case, the opposite side in our triangle is four and the adjacent side in our triangle is six. So four over six or two thirds. And when you plug that into a calculator, you get about 33.7 degrees. And so that would technically be the angle here, okay? 33.7 degrees. Now in terms of the compass rows, if you're thinking about these angles, 45 degrees would be a true northeast, okay? And a east by northeast would mean that you're going halfway up, which would be half of 45, which is 22 and a half degrees. So now the question becomes, if our angle here is 33.7, is that closer to 45 or 22.5? So it's 11.2 away from 22.5, but it is 11.3 away from 45. So it's kind of right in between. So both of these compass rows directions, both northeast and east by northeast, are almost equidistant, equal angles away from this angle that we actually found for ourselves. So you, neither direction really best describes it. But again, that kind of brings us back to thinking about it as seven kilometers in a roughly northeasterly direction. Now, the other thing to point out here is that just because you have these identities for the unit circle doesn't mean you can't use these in other situations. And so let's say that you knew this vector was about seven kilometers. Let's say that you knew how far from the school you were when you finished the walk and you were about seven kilometers away and you knew the angle then if you wanted to figure out how far you had gone east and how far you had gone north, in other words, if you were trying to break this down into its components, and so here's my one vector, that's my resultant or my overall, and if I'm trying to break that down into the x and y components, well then if I know that angle and I know my r, then r times sine of theta equals opposite, which would be my y, and r times cosine of theta would be equal to my adjacent, which is my x. And so if you run through this now just for practice and you take the cosine of 33.7, I get 0.83, just about 0.832. And if I multiply that by, what did we say earlier? 7.2 for the actual length away. If I multiply that by 7.2, 
then what do I get on my calculator? I get 5.99. I would say that 5.99 is my six kilometers, okay? And you could run through that with the sign as well. We will do a lot more of this when we get into the word problems, but this is the background and this is the math review. I hope these notes are helpful and I hope that you uh, remember seeing some of this stuff before. If this is new to you, then please plan on staying after school for Math Mondays tutoring, okay? And uh, good luck with your notes and with the discussion on vectors.